Hello, this is Craftineer. I get a lot of requests when I'm streaming to join the server that I'm currently on. And that is a private server that I set up for friends and friend of friends. I would like to make it possible for other people to set up their own servers if they have a wish to play Minecraft with friends or with strangers. Preferably with friends. <laughs> Uh, so I put this together because I want people to be able to do that. And I know that some of the technical parts of this are going to be a bit much for some people. Uh, so if you do have any issues with it, just let me know. Uh, I can try to help you, but more than likely this might be out of my ability to do so. I've tried to put this guide together to be as simple as possible, but there are aspects of it that will be more advanced. And you will also have to pay for your own server. Now the price isn't too expensive. Uh, currently, it depends on the kind of server that you want to run. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, please note that the server is only compatible uh, with the Minecraft Java Edition. If you're playing on Bedrock, you'll have to get with Mojang about making a Realms server. Or not Mojang, uh, you'll have to get with the Microsoft official website. Now I currently use OVH Cloud for my private server, and I've tried to highlight some of the information that you need to take into account here. So to start with, you'll need to create an account on OVH Cloud. And you'll have to pick a region that works for you because when you create a server in that region and the account itself, it will limit where you can put a server and it can also influence the time that it will take to actually like connect to that server. Now, now, once you decide which region that you want to create your account in and you have created that account, you'll need to decide how big of a server that you will need. Now for a small, like one to three people or so, or I should say two to four people, you can probably get away with the smallest value here. The only issue is you'll have to tweak some of the settings that I'm going to recommend because I recommend getting the essential that'll let you play with multiple people and then you won't have to worry about uh, the server having any issues. So I recommend getting the essential one because this has 4 gigabytes of RAM for the server itself. We'll be utilizing two of them and then two of them will be for the server to function on its own. Now when you select the type of server that you want to order, it'll give you this menu and this will essentially tell you kind of the region that you're in as well as what you're looking to purchase. And you can also make a couple modifications here, but what we're going to select is over on that left side. We're going to select distribution only because we don't want to install it with something already on it. And we're going to select Ubuntu because it is free to install and it's easy to set up Minecraft on that version of Linux. This is where you might get a different type of selection than what I have. So I'm in the United States, so I was given these regions in order to localize the server that I'm placing. Uh, there are additional options that you can choose that will increase the price. Uh, I personally don't use the snapshot or the automated backup, but if you think that you will have those kind of issues where you need to restore your data or roll back the server, you may wish to purchase these. Uh, depending on how long you think you're going to be running the server, uh, if it's going to be for just a couple friends, maybe for a month or two, I would go with the monthly subscription. 
and then obviously if you intend to run this for multiple years and continuously update it and maintain it you could get a discount if you chose to kind of purchase it in advance once you have already purchased your server you will get an email from OVH that contains the details about your server which includes the username and password. Now you will need these in just a moment. When you go to the dashboard on their website and go under virtual private servers you should have an instance that will have its own name. It obviously won't have my server name in it. You'll want to click on, site, uh, click on that and then on the right hand side of that window you'll have an IP address and you can ignore the rest of this. I've also blocked this out because I don't wish to disclose the server address publicly but you'll want to grab this because you'll need this. You'll want the IPv4 address. And once you have that, there are official instructions on how to log in to your server. Uh, if you'd like to go through those steps uh, before or after the rest of this video, you can find them here. Uh, I do recommend using SSH keys. It's just a security uh, feature and it is something I also use myself because it just makes it so that the chances of your server being taken over are less likely because of a simple password that was left on there. Now there is a no key method that you can use. Now there is a no key method and this method involves a virtual console. So if you go back to your instance, your virtual private server, and click on the three dots, you should have a KVM option. If you click on that, you'll be given a console that you can sign into with the username and password that you were provided. You will not need the IP address, you will not need to create an SSH key. Now if you'd like to go through the other method, you can keep watching or you can skip ahead to the part where we're actually setting up the server. OVH has an official guide on how to create an SSH key. You can find that here. Uh, if you'd like to look, review that before or after, you can pause the video now. Uh, I have my own guide here for how to set up an SSH key. Uh, you'll be using a program called PuTTY, which is very common in the IT industry. You can download PuTTY at the following web URL. This is the official site for it. You can go to Google and search for PuTTY. It'll take you to a PuTTY website that will then redirect you here to actually download it. Now. Once you've downloaded PuTTY and have it installed, it should be as simple as hitting next most of the way through it. Uh, you will then need to go to your start menu and type in PuTTY Gen, similar to this right here, and then click on it. And that will give you this window here for the PuTTY key generator. You're going to select ED25519 under the parameters for the type of key to generate and then you're going to click generate and it will then ask you to move your mouse around like this to randomly generate data for it to create a key that is randomized. Once you've done that you'll want to save the public key and save the private key. You'll need these later to actually connect to your server and you'll want to store these in a place where you can access them later. This is an example of what a key that was generated looks like. I highly recommend you don't use this 
So this is just a randomly generated key. It has no tie-in to my own account at all, in case you had any, any funny ideas. Uh, and this is an example of how to add a key. So this is the public key that is used in a key handshake. You don't have to understand how the key system works, just that it kind of acts like a password. Now in order to add this, you go back to your account and you go to add an SSH key under dedicated. Once you're there, you can give it an ID or a name and then copy what was in here over to here. It should automatically select this because of this and then you just hit confirm. Now in order to use the key that you just generated you'll need to open up PuTTY which is the application that was downloaded and installed. Once you open the application on the left hand panel you should be able to go down to connection SSH and then auth. You'll want to browse to the private key that you saved off just a minute ago and then you'll want to go to session and then add the IP address of your server and then hit enter. Now something you can also do is type a name into here such as Minecraft server and then hit save and that'll remember that. It'll remember that you used the key, it'll remember that you used the host name. And then that will appear in this little menu here in the future if you ever need to connect again, which you probably will. Once you're connected, if you used Ubuntu and you're using a SSH key, because you don't have to use a key, you can use the password that was provided in your email. Uh, you'll be prompted for a username and if you did not use or if you did use a key you'll get this security alert as well and you'll just want to accept if you are not using a key you can still put in your username and your password now once you're actually connected to the server we will go through the steps of setting up the actual Minecraft server. So the first thing that you'll type is sudo space su space hyphen. What this does is it gives you an elevated command prompt, or in this case a shell. And that basically makes you the administrator, it makes you the person of authority. And once you are root, which it should appear in the, the little prompt, you'll want to enter in this next command, which will add a repository for Java, because the newer versions of Minecraft require Java version 16. You'll have to add this repository so that Ubuntu knows how to get that. And then you'll have to do an update. And you'll get several prompts during this. All you have to do is answer them. It'll most likely just ask you to confirm that you want to update pa a package. And then you'll have other prompts uh, such as for Java to just accept their agreement. Once you're through that, you'll enter the next command, which is the make dir slash Minecraft. That'll create a folder on the server called Minecraft at the root. So then you're going to cd to that folder by doing cd space slash minecraft. And then we're going to grab the file remotely from the Mojang server. So in order to get that, you'll want to go to the URL that can be found at the bottom of the screen. And there will be a link that you can right click and then copy the link. Now you can go back to your window and type wget space and then that link. Once you hit enter, it'll download the jar file, which is the server.jar, into the slash Minecraft folder. Next, you need to make it so you can actually execute that file. So you're going to chmod 
space plus x space server.jar or whatever the file name is that you downloaded. Make sure you downloaded an official file or a file that was provided by Spigot or PaperMC or Bucket. Those are all different alternatives to the official jar file. Uh, once you do that, you can enter in the command below and then I'll execute the server.jar which will launch Minecraft. Now the first time that you do this, it'll complain that you did not accept the EULA. So what you'll have to do is you'll have to go into the file that is in that folder and accept it. Now I won't go into how editing files on Linux works, but if you look up the commands of how to edit a file in Google, it should be pretty self-explanatory. Uh, from there, there are other things you can do, such as running it with a different utility. If you want to get more advanced, you can look up a command called tmux, T-M-U-X, and that is what I use to run the, the server command. That way I can exit the shell and I don't have to worry about it anymore. Because if you close your window, uh, it will cancel the execution of the server unless you're running this from the KVM session. Well, hopefully you now have a Minecraft server that you can share with your friends. Uh, once you do have that server, there are settings that you can modify in the server.properties. And some of that includes the port that you have to connect on, which by default is uh, listed in many of the official documents and then you'd give your friends the IP address to connect to as well. Hopefully this helps someone. Uh, I know I will recommend people to watch this whenever they ask me in the future uh, about my own server. Thank you very much. Uh, you can find me on Twitch, YouTube, or Twitter if you'd like to ask me any questions or watch me stream Minecraft. Thank you.